Yeah, hello everybody. Thank you for the opportunity to present. I'm Francesco. I hold a postdoctoral uh, research fellowship from the Swiss National Science Foundation, and I'm currently affiliated at the University of Bremen in Germany. Uh, what I want to uh, share today with you are some reflections on the possibility of using the capability approach as a normative framework for, uh, for uh, framing a new eco-social contract. And my presentation is articulated in three uh, steps. So I first uh, briefly present a capability approach, then I discuss some limitations or problems of this approach, and then I um, elaborate a transformative or radical version of the capability approach for a new eco-social world. The capability approach was originally developed by Amartya Sen and Marta Nussbaum, and its aim was to rethink the meaning of development beyond economic growth. So the idea of this approach is to shift the emphasis of um, public action away from material resources, away from a narrow concern with people's access to resources, and towards people's real freedom to lead the kind of life they have reason to value. So there is a shift of public action away from um, economic growth towards uh, what intrinsically matters to people. Another feature of this approach is the importance according to democracy. Democracy is seen both as a means for promoting people's capabilities, but also as an end in itself. This means that people are seen as agents, as co-authors of policies, and not only as their beneficiaries. So they are not only beneficiaries of policies, but also um, agents and uh, uh, their voices uh, matter in formulating policies. Uh, this also means that the idea of social justice behind the capability approach is a, um, is a broad vision. It's not only uh, that we are concerned with distributive justice, with people's access to resources, but also with issues of recognition, of participation, and of political power and political equality. I see uh, one essential uh, problem with the um, uh, capability approaches currently um, in its current uh, dominant interpretation, because um, essentially, uh, the capability approach is often used to legitimize this commitment to inclusive growth and inclusive sustainable development. So in with especially with concern with issues of linked to the environmental challenge, then there is a commitment to economic um, growth that remains in place, but then economic growth should be green. So then we have green growth. And uh, the capability approach suggests to make this green growth also inclusive or sustainable development to make it inclusive. And this emphasis on inclusion um, actually is linked to commitment to make this economic growth employment friendly. So there is an emphasis on, uh, on facilitating people's um, participation in the economy. And I think this is a rather narrow interpretation of the capability approach and um, because the commitment to economic growth may be problematic from an environmental perspective and um, but also from a uh, from a human well-being perspective and I think this emphasis on em employment is uh, maybe problematic as well so I think there are several issues here I just outlined some of them. So first of all, this, this interpretation tends to overlook democracy because people are seen essentially as human capital or as workers for the economy, but then um, they are not entitled to uh, discuss um, issues such as what should be produced, how, where, and for whom. So the, there is not, um, people are not conceived as citizens that can co-determine uh, the nature of the economic model. The issue seems to be simply to include people in the, in the economy. In the same vein, um, especially when the focus is on including people in the labor market, there is the, the problem that, that in this, uh, this way, th th there is a tendency to depoliticize inequalities and to um, overlook, uh, for example, the asymmetry in the power asymmetry between uh, employers and workers. 
Then there is the, the issue that employment is not necessarily positive for workers themselves. So we can imagine um, that uh, unhealthy working conditions, for example, uh, may be uh, negative, have a negative impact on uh, workers' capabilities. And, but also for society at large, there are some uh, jobs, actually some industrial sectors and jobs in these industrial sectors that do not contribute to, to society, uh, so social well-being, or that undermine um, environmental sustainability. And then in these cases, uh, we should um, be uh, attentive and uh, pay attention to these uh, problems so that we do not uh, assume that employment, every kind of employment is every good for workers and for society we should have a more critical look maybe on this employment issue. And finally, another um, problem that I see is that this uh, interpretation tends to uh, downplay the value uh, of other activities beyond employment. So for instance, care work, but also all forms of uh, civic involvement and even important dimensions of human life for, for people's quality of life, such as play and leisures. These uh, spheres, uh, tend to be undervalued and uh, remaining unrecognized um, with respect to paid work. On the basis of this critique, I tried to develop a transformative and more radical interpretation of the capability approach, where the emphasis is not on including people in the economy, but on democratizing the economy. I think the capability approach actually suggests that we should reform the economy and um, in a way that it is no longer oriented to profit maximization, but to the satisfaction of democratically defined social needs. Um, so in this context, I think uh, we should also abandon the commitment to economic growth and open instead a democratic debate on the very definition of progress and what quality of life and well-being actually means. In this radical interpretation of the capability approach, we also have a um, greater focus on expanding people's freedom, both at work, so for example, through reforms such as uh, workplace democracy, and uh, freedom from work. So exactly um, giving more value and recognition to these activities beyond work, beyond employment. I think this is a way of um, enhancing people's capabilities, both at work and um, from work, that is, uh, yeah, in the dominant version that risks to be um, overlooked. And finally, I think um, a capability approach can um, actually allow us to, um, to more deeply question the meaning of work. And, and even the conceptualization of work itself. So we, I think from a capability perspective, we should abandon the idea that work is simply a productive activity that contributes to economic growth or to profit generation or wealth generation. And um, we can move, for example, drawing from the feminist uh, literature that uses the lenses of care to rethink uh, all economic activities, we could um, redefine also in this case um, the uh, work as the practice of taking care of the world. So putting the care for people and for planet at the core of this new eco-social contract would mean um, to put the capability to take care of the world at the core of it and at the core of the capability approach, shifting the emphasis away from material production and towards social reproduction. So to conclude, I think there is an increasing uh, agreement that we need a new eco-social contract, yet at the global level we see um, that consensus emerging around this vision of inclusive green growth, where the emphasis is really on uh, an economic growth, um, which is um, made compatible somehow uh, with environmental uh, demands, and uh, with this commitment to creating employment and this employment-friendly public action, and especially through the creation of green jobs. I think this vision is rather um, uh, limited and it involves, um, and maybe even problematic, and it involves a narrow interpretation of the capability approach. I suggested then a radical or transformative interpretation of the capability approach where the emphasis is not on inclusion, but on democratization, where um, 
the non-economic dimensions of freedom and of uh, human life and social life uh, comes to the fore and uh, it gives more room to these activities beyond work but also allows this approach or this new um, interpretation allows to uh, rethink even the meaning of work uh, maybe using the lenses of care so as um, the practice of taking care of the world and uh, I think, yeah, we maybe putting this um, capability to take care of the world at the core of a new eco-social contract may be uh, very valuable. And uh, yeah, this would also mean um, to replace the commitment to economic growth or abandon the commitment to economic growth, in fact, and instead uh, opening um, a debate on the meaning of progress, of quality of life and well-being. I thank you very much for your attention and feel free to contact me. Goodbye.